Hello there! This is Lion in a Box with part 6 of my tutorial series. Today we are going to be talking about Advanced Node FX System Functions. More specifically about Modifiers. Modifiers allow you to change and modify your effects over time during the animation. With modifiers, you'll be able to create awesome and dynamic effects like this or this or this or this or this and even create compositions like this. By learning how to use modifiers, you'll finally become a master of PixelFX Designer. So, without further ado, let's dive right in. Before starting this video, I have already prepared this project with those two cute little dragons. It will help to explain the concept of modifiers. Basically, I've imported three images, the two dragons and the background. And for each image, I have a node effects tab. Now let's talk modifiers. There are Three different types of modifiers in PixelFX Designer. Wave modifiers, time modifiers and random modifiers. To begin with, I'd like to show you the wave modifier. Wave modifiers let you change the value of an effect parameter over time. The effect will start at the minimum value, then move gradually to the highest value and then move right back to the minimum value from where it started and then just repeat the whole process. And in this manner the value will rise and sink, rise and sink, just like a wave. To add a wave modifier, you can access the different modifiers over the Node FX system bar. Simply click on Add Node Move into the modifier section and here you can select one of the three modifiers. To make use of such a modifier, first we need to add an effect to our node system. So let me do just that. I move into the transform section and here I am adding a position effect. I connect the input node to the new effect and now by changing the X or Y parameter, I can move the dragon around on the canvas. Now that the effect is in place, we can add the modifier. As I've showed you before, I click on Add Nodes in the Node system bar, go into the Modifier section and as I said, I'm going to add the Wave modifier. So I click on Wave. The Wave modifier has appeared in the Node system. Now there is a little difference between modifier nodes and effect nodes. Unlike the effect node, you do not chain the modifier node onto the input node or onto the last effect node, but instead you connect it to the red dot next to the effect parameter. So here you see that I can connect the modifier either to the X parameter or to the Y parameter. It is actually quite simple to remember. You connect the black dot of the effect node to the black dot of the input node or the last effect node. And you connect the red dot of the modifier node to the red dot of the parameter. Wait a second. Connect the different colors? That's just like fixing wires in Among Us. I'm quickly dragging the modifier on top of the effect. I like to do that just for clarity, so that it is obvious to which effect the modifier belongs. But you could place the modifier wherever you want. See, I fixed wires, there's no way I'm the imposter. Um, what I meant is, I connected the modifier. As soon as I connected the modifier, you can see the effect it has on the dragon. The X parameter moves back and forth between the lowest and highest value, making the dragon fly back and forth as you see. 
No, even the modifier itself has parameters that you can change. For example, by changing the speed of the modifier, I change the speed with which the dragon moves back and forth. A bigger speed value moves the dragon faster. And by moving the value slider closer to zero, I can decrease the speed. I can also set a negative speed, which basically means that the dragon moves in the opposite direction. But since the dragon is moving back and forth anyways, it wouldn't make much of a difference. At least not in this case. I'm going to manually set the speed value to zero. You can manually set any value in a text field by pressing Ctrl and then left clicking on the field. When you set the modifier speed to zero, the modifier stops changing the parameter value and it remains frozen on the maximum value. Now, as long as the modifier is active, I will not be able to change the parameter value manually, even when the modifier speed is set to zero. Whenever I try to change the parameter value, it jumps right back to the value set by the modifier. Another parameter of the modifier is its range. The range defines the lowest and highest value between which the modifier moves back and forth. Right now, the range is set from 0 to 1. This means that the effect value will move from the lowest value of the effect parameter slider to the highest value of the effect parameter slider. So, to be able to change the effect parameter value manually, I'm now going to deactivate the modifier by simply unticking the box in its top left corner. Now, if I move the parameter slider around, you can see that it goes from negative 128 to positive 128. So this is the range within which the modifier moves the value. But as I told you, you can change the range of the modifier. So let's come back to the modifier and reactivate it. And now I'm changing the range values. Now it is set from approximately 0.3 to 0.6. And you can see that with the decreased range, the movements of the dragon became smaller. And if we observe the effect node, we see that the slider does not move all the way up to the highest and lowest values anymore. You can also set the range beyond 0 and 1 by typing it in manually. With Ctrl left click, I set the range from minus 5 to 5. The dragon's movement increases dramatically. You can't even see it anymore, since it moves so far outside the canvas frame. And that concludes the wave modifier. The second very useful modifier that I want to show you is the time modifier. The time modifier is actually quite similar to the wave modifier. But instead of moving back and forth, the time modifier moves in only one direction. It moves from the lowest value up to the highest value, just like the wave modifier. But then it jumps right back to the lowest value and keeps moving in one direction. It is like a time loop that repeats itself. I know, this is some crazy Doctor Strange kind of shit. To show you more about that magical time modifier, I'm going to delete the current wave modifier by simply clicking on the trash icon. You probably already understood how it works by now. So to add the time modifier, I click on add node in the system tabs menu, I go into the modifier section and I select the time modifier. And the time modifier 
has appeared in the node system. I place the modifier on top of the effect, for convenience. Once again, I connect the modifier to the position parameter and have a look how it influences the position. We have created a repeating time loop. There are different uses for the time modifier. For example, to create water wave effects. Funnily enough, to create a cohesive wave effect, you use the time modifier and not the wave modifier. Now, just like with the wave modifier, you can set the parameters of the time modifier. The parameters are exactly the same as before. You can increase or decrease the speed. And with it, the speed of the dragon changes. Here as well, you can set the speed to negative. And now the dragon moves into the opposite direction. So the negative speed is especially relevant for the time modifier, because you set the direction of the time loop. And just like with the wave modifier, you can set the range of the movement. This is what it looks like when I decrease the range. And this is what it looks like when I increase the range. And that's all for the time modifier. One more modifier to go. Which is the random modifier. Just like the previous modifiers, the random modifier changes the effect over time. However, it does not do this by gradually moving the effect value into one direction, like the previous modifiers did, but instead it keeps picking a random effect value at a rate and time interval that you can define. In order to show you the random modifier, I am first going to delete the time modifier. I click the little trash icon. And now, to import the random modifier, I click on Add Node, go into the modifier section and select Random. Just like before, to enable the modifier, we connect it to the effect parameter. And you see, now the dragon jumps every second to a new random position. If I increase the modifier speed, he jumps around faster. If I decrease the modifier speed, the dragon waits longer before jumping to a new random position. And if I manually set the speed to even 50, it creates this cool stroboscope-like effect. And just like previous modifiers, you can decrease or increase the range within which the modifier picks the random value. Here's what it looks like when I decrease the range. And here is what it looks like when I increase the range. Now you know all three modifiers in PixelFX Designer. And you can use those modifiers not only for position effects, but for each and every one of the effects in the NodeFX system. To show you that, I'm going to give you two more examples. One with the color hue effect and one with the wave transform effect. I clear the current node system by right-clicking the tab and selecting clear. Now I click on add nodes, go into the color section and add a hue effect. I set up the effect by connecting it to the input node. The hue effect lets you add a color tint to the animation. Now I go into the modifier section and add a wave modifier. As soon as I connect the wave modifier to the hue parameter, you can see how now the dragon is changing back and forth through all the different colors. It's a really dope effect. And now let's show you the wave effect. 
For this example, I am going to open up a different project. You can see that here we have an image with bright and dark blue stripes. To create a wave effect, first I import a waves effect node, not to be confused with the wave modifier. You can see that the waves effect has multiple parameters that I can regulate. I can set both the number of waves and the distortion strength. You also have the amount parameter. The amount parameter lets you set the progress of the wave. So you see that if I start moving the amount parameter from 0 slowly up to 1, the wave keeps moving slowly for a full wave cycle. And if you look closely, you will notice that the amount value of 1 produces exactly the same output as the amount value of 0. So, to create a continuous wave effect, we want to loop the amount value from 0 up to 1 and then jump back to 0 and repeat. And as we've discussed before, for that we need to use the time modifier. So I go ahead and do just that. As soon as the time modifier is connected to the amount value, I get those beautiful waves. And I can play around with the distortion strength and number of waves. One last important thing to notice is that even though every effect can be influenced by a modifier, you cannot necessarily modify every parameter of the effect. If you take a look at the Waves Effect node, you see that only the amount parameter and the horizontal and vertical direction parameters have a red dot next to them. So those are the only three parameters that we can influence with a modifier. And that is all you need to know about modifiers. There are so many ways that you can combine different modifiers and effects to create awesome results. So I really encourage you to experiment for yourself and see what awesome combinations and effects you can come up with. All in all, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope it has been helpful to you. If it was, feel free to leave a like, subscribe or a comment. My next tutorial is going to be a special episode. I will explain how to create an amazing warp tunnel animation with PixelFX Designer. That's all for now and see you soon!